Good evening, brethren. I hope that you are doing well in the Lord this wonderful evening. As we enter upon our study, let us bow our heads down for a word of prayer. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we come before you this wonderful evening. We thank you for the blessing of your Son who died for us at the cross of Heavenly God. We know, Father God, that at Calvary, all our burdens are lifted to Heavenly God. This wonderful evening, as we enter upon this study, we pray that may you give us power to understand Heavenly God. We pray, Father God, that may you give us courage to stand for you, Heavenly Father, each and every day as we inch closer to the end of this world. Be with us now and forevermore. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Welcome again, brethren. And today we are going to study about Sabbath, the great test. Uh, we'll begin by laying a foundation, then we'll understand why we are saying that the Sabbath is a great test. We'll, we'll first lay a foundation, then we'll finish and understand why the Sabbath is a great test because we know very well that God is very clear about his Saturday Sabbath and it is enshrined in his, in his law, in his law of love and he is very clear about, about the observance of the day. But there are several things that he is also very clear about that we are going to study this wonderful evening. To start us off, we'll read the book of Revelation chapter number 13 from verse number 16. Revelation chapter 13 from verse number 16, which says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. We are not doing a comprehensive study of this book of Revelation 13, but we just want to highlight on several things that have been mentioned in the book of Revelation 13. That because we know very well that there are, there are great happenings that are going to take place, that are taking place in, in this world. They are, they are already rolling on. They are, only, they are almost coming to a, a complete fulfillment. And we want to look at whom will be affected by these great changes. Who will be affected by these great changes? He says this, And he causeth all, so all, Will be caused. He causeth all, all will be caused. Both small and great, because to cause, to cause is to is like to coerce in the context of Revelation 13. And he causeth all. So where are you and where am I? I am in the all. Then he says, both small and great. If you are not among the small, you are among the great. The world is in two camps. Or by the time that this text will be getting a complete fulfillment, the world will be in the two camps. There will be the small and there will be the great. The world also, and we know very well that the world is shifting towards two, two, two ends, the rich and the, and, and the poor. And to every soul it is, it, is, it, is, it is clear that by how things are happening, the world will be, will be, will be, will be divided into the rich and the poor. James chapter 5 says about how the rich amass all the wealth. And the cry, the cry of the hirelings have entered into the ears of, of the Lord. And you know very well, if you even look at statistics, it tell you very well that uh, a great percentage of the wealth that is in this world is owned by about 1 to 2% of, of, the, of the population, which means the, the, other, the, other, the, other, the other 80 or so percent are not among those who are, are the richest according to statistics. So Revelation here says, you can go and find out that, Revelation here is very, is very clear that uh, this thing will involve all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Then another thing here that uh, is very clear in the book of Revelation, it says this in verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. We want to look at this, and that no man... No man, when it says he causeth all, he again it says no man, which means that all men are involved in this. What, uh, what is this? It says might buy or sell, which means here that according to the book of Revelation, there is an economic agenda because it says there will be a problem of buying and selling. For there to be a problem of buying and selling, which means that there must, be, uh, econ there must be an economic agenda that will bring the world to a point whereby there'll be no buying or selling. Now again, we go to the, to, the, to the word of God and look at the book of Revelation, 
chapter number 18. Revelation chapter number 18. Because the Bible has said there will be a problem of buying and selling. And it will affect each and every person. But uh, in which camp will you be? Because if you read the book of Revelation 13, there are those who will be in the camp of those, there are those who will be in the camp who will not go along with, with the changes, and there are those who will, who will go along with the changes. Now, in the book of Revelation uh, 18, it says this from verse number 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. Then it continues, verse number 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to she hath filled to fill her double. Here it is talking about, about Babylon. And it says that the sins of Babylon I have reached have reached heaven. And people are being called out of out of Babylon. And we know very well that Babylon will be engaged in these eventful changes that are taking place in, in this world. But that's why we are saying that there are those people who will go along and follow the path of Babylon. And there are those who will not go along, those who will come out of Babylon. Because God is saying, come out of her, my people. And those who will not be involved, those who will not accept the, 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 the dictates of, of the Babylonian dictates, they are they who have come out because God says, Come out of her, my people. We, we go back to Revelation 18. What are some of the sins that will, will, will make God call her, uh, call his people out of Babylon? Verse number 2 says, Revelation 18, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every fall spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Why? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of fornication. These are the false teachings. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So here, there is a throng of people who have been deceived by Babylon. There is a group of people who have been deceived by, by Babylon. It has deceived the whole world. And who is mentioned specifically? It says the kings of the earth and the merchants of the earth have been deceived by her. And we saw in the book of Revelation 13 that there will be a problem of buying and selling. And this problem of buying and selling, it will not only involve policy makers, it will not only involve lawmakers, it will not only involve the kings of the earth, it will not only involve the merchants of the earth, but it will also have a spiritual perspective. Because here we see the Babylonian system will deceive people. And through its deceptions, if we are, we are studying the book of Revelation 13 in depth, it will bring a world to a point whereby, uh, the, 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 whereby all will be will, will be tested on the point of on, of worship, whereby economy will be will be used to 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 to, uh, to force to cause people to receive the mark of, of, of the beast, which is the spurious spurious Sabbath. So, uh, having established that short foundation, we know very well that according to the word of God, there are great changes that are bound to take place in the earth. And we have been seeing them time and again, and we are continuing to see them. So, brethren, we want to look. We know very well that students of history, if you are a student of history, you know very well that during a time of crisis, great changes always take place. And you understand very well that the world today is in a crisis. And a crisis has always stand out as an opportune moment for, for thought leaders, for policy makers to bring great changes upon the earth. Let us just look at some of the changes that are taking place in the in the in the, in the earth today. Now, if you if you if you if you look at this, it says, uh, it says the Great Reset. This is the World Economic Forum. The Great Reset. It says there is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of COVID-19 crisis. To improve the state of the world, the World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative. So the world is engaged in a Great Reset Initiative. And who is enga engaged in, in, in this? It says this, as we, as, we enter, as we enter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery, this initi initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of global relations. Remember, it says all those determining the future state of global relations. It is involving all those determining the future state of global relations. It's, it continues, they continue to say that the direction of national economies, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of global 
common. So here we see the people who are involved in this great reset. We see the people here who are who are involved in these great changes that are that are that are taking place in the world today. And we know very well, having established a foundation from, from the book of Revelation, that while the world, while the businessmen of the world are, are, are making great changes, while the thought leaders, while the while the policy makers, while those who call shots as to the policies that, that govern the earth are, are making great changes, there's there's a spiritual aspect of this because there is a power that is interested in these changes that are taking place. And that's why Revelation 18 said very well that the merchants of the earth have been deceived, that the kings of the earth have been deceived. So those kings were not ground in the in the word of God those merchants who are not grounded in the word of God they shall follow along the deceptions of the Babylonian system and this deception will lead to a point whereby it will be a test of worship and whoever will not agree to worship according to the dictates of mother Babylon will be will be will be persecuted and that's why he said that uh, and all should receive the, 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 the mark of the base but let us look let us look at something what are these great changes to understand this let us just uh, play this and understand what these great changes, great changes are. Let us just play this and see what uh, what this agenda is all about. Brethren, we, we can see that the world is preparing for a great reset. And if you have looked at, at the video, you can see the, 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 the problems in society. And we know very well that it is always the plan of the devil to bring problems in the society. And when he brings the problems in the society, he uses those as an opportune moment to advance his agenda. Go back to history and understand that whenever there has been a crisis upon the earth, there have been great changes that have taken place on this earth. And as we have seen, that there are great changes. People desire a, a great, a great, a, a great reset. There is the great reset agenda that is happening. But without even going further into the great reset agenda, we have just seen that there is an agenda that is already is already forming. There is an agenda that is there is already being built. But according to the Book of Revelation that we had read, is that there is another system that is interested in these changes more so about, with, with the people that are that are engaged in this in this change. Look at look at look at look at this. What we what we look. Who are going to be involved? It has called each and every person to be involved. But look at this. It says to help inform all those determining the future state of global relations, the directions of national economies, mm -hmm, the economy here. There is the aspect of economy, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of global commons, drawing from the vision that vast expertise of the leaders mm -hmm, leaders are engaged engaged across the forums communities the great reset initiative has set of, uh, has a set of dimensions to build a new social contract that honors the dignity of every human so the world is 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 wants to go through a great reset to rebuild a new social contract and according to revelation 13 babylonian system is also interested with thought leaders with the merchants with the kings of the earth and as they gather for a great reset, Babylon will creep in. 
and those who are not grounded in the word of God will be deceived and follow after the systems of Babylon. And the end result, the central issue will be worship. That's why we, we read that, that no man might be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast, unless they worship the beast and have his mark in their right hand or in their, or in their, or in their forehead. Now let us look at this testimonies to the church, testimonies to the church, volume five, page four fifty to four fifty one. It says, it says testimonies to the to the church. This is what it reads. It says, men of position and reputation will join with the lawless and the vile to take counsel against the people of God. So after the thought leaders have been, the thought leaders will allow to be deceived. Those thought leaders that will follow after the man of sin. Those thought leaders that will follow after the spiritual system, that is, that is, that after the apostate spiritual system, what will be the end result according to, to the prophecy? He says, uh, men of position and reputation will join with the lawless and the vile to take counsel against the people of God. Who are these that will be involved in this? He says, wealth, genius, education will combine to cover them with contempt. And this is why we are saying Sabbath the great test. Who are these will be covered with the contempt? We'll look at that. Then, what will rulers turn into if they'll drink the wine of Babylon? If they'll drink the false teachings of Babylon? They'll be turned into persecuting rulers. It says persecuting rulers, ministers, and the church members. Now, look at, look at, look at that union that has been brought there. It has talked about rulers. It has talked about church members. And do we see now the picture in Revelation 18? That there is, there is a church system. That is, that, is, that is falling, and God is calling his people out of it. And because this church system is falling, it will seek to have a union with the thought leaders of, of the world and will deceive them to help them through the means that they have because we know it knows that these, these thought leaders, that they have got the money, it knows that they have got, they have got the, the artillery, it knows that they, they have got the machinery to help it achieve its end. That's why it deceives them so that it can, it, they can help her achieve her ends and her hand and her hand the, the central issue here is is worship now uh great great controversy not great controversy testimonies to the church that we were reading it continues to say that wealth genius now remember what we have we have read those who are engaged in the in the in the in the, in the movement that we are seeing taking place and can you find these groups where wealth genius education will combine to cover them with contempt persecuting rulers it says persecuting rulers Ministers and church members will conspire against them. So here we see a combination of, of the church and the world. He says, with voice and pen, by boast, threats, and ridicule, they will seek to overthrow their faith. By false representations and angry appeals, they will stir up the passions of the people, not having a thus said the scripture to bring against the advocates of the Bible Sabbath. That's why we're talking about the, the, the Sabbath as a, as a test. And we see very well that this union that is being talked about in the book of uh, Testimonies to the Church is that it is a union that is formed outside the word of God. It is a union that does not have the word of God. And because it does not have the word of God, it will turn against the Bible, the Sabbath-keeping people, the Sabbath-keeping flock. And that's why we're talking about Sabbath, the great test. And that's why I'm saying that this Sabbath will be a great test because the world, those who will allow to be deceived, those who will drink from the wine of Babylon, will be joined with Babylon and will do the bidding of Babylon. And we know that Babylon also has got a day of worship, a spurious Sabbath. And those who will not follow after the Babylonian spurious Sabbath, they'll be brought into close combat with the beast and its, and its, and its image. We continue to read testimonies to the, to the church. It continues to say, by false representations and angry appeals, they will stir up the passions of the people. So the passions of the people are going to be involved. Uh, multitudes are going to be involved. There are those who will, who will allow to be stirred up, who will be deceived by the false doctrines. Then it says, not having a thus said the scriptures to bring against the advocates of the Bible Sabbath, they will resort to oppressive enactments. When it says oppressive enactments, 
it means that laws will change that the laws in this in this globe will change that the laws in this world will change and these laws will change and they will stand against the people of god they'll stand against those people who keep the word of god and that's why we are dread don't forget revelation 13 whereby we say that and no man might buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast so this problem of buying and selling according to the bible it sees a point whereby the problem of buying and selling will be used against the people of god we continue to read uh to read uh testimonies to the to the church it says so we have seen that uh according to to spirit of prophecy that there will be oppressive enactments now to secure popularity and patron patronage we see very well that legislators will yield to the demand for a Sunday law. To secure popularity and patronage, legislators, remember these are the people who are involved in, 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 in making laws, in the work of legislation, they will yield to the demand for a Sunday law. Why will they yield to the demand for a, for a Sunday law? They will yield to the demand for a Sunday law because Babylon has got a spurious Sabbath. And Babylon, those who will be drunk with the wine of Babylon, will go and do the bidding of Babylon, will go and follow after the day of worship of Babylon, and will walk away from the Sabbath commandment, which God gave uh, to man as a sign between him and, and, and them. Now, we, we, we continue again uh, and read uh, testimonies to the, to, the, to the church, whereby it says to secure popularity and patronage legislators, it says that to say... Uh, not that one to secure popularity and patronage legislators will uh, we, we have seen how legislators will, uh, will 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 combine will yield to the demand for a sunday then spirit of prophecy says that in this battlefield comes the last great conflict of the controversy between truth and error on this battlefield of sunday sabbath comes this comes this battlefield on this battlefield comes the last great conflict of the controversy between truth and error. So brethren, the world is taking shape. While some men might, might, might be honest in the changes that they want to, to bring, there are those who are, 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 are concealing the true issue before, before, before people. But what we are saying is this, that as the world is seeking for a great reset, there is a system that will seek to take advantage of this according to the word of God. And we'll use those policies that will be made to seek to enforce issues of worship. Now we go again to the spirit of prophecy. Let us go again to the spirit of prophecy and read and read the, the next one. Uh, this is testi uh, not testimonies to the church. Prophets and kings. It says, the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The observance of the false Sabbath will be urged upon us. Now here, the prophet had written that the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The observance of the false Sabbath will be urged upon us. Now, how will the observance of the false Sabbath be urged? There are uh, mechanisms that those who are pushing for the false Sabbath will use. And according to the word of God, we have seen that no man might be able to buy or sell, which means that one tool that will be effective for those who want to enforce the false Sabbath will be the economy and as we see that the world is seeking for a great reset we know that in as much as they seek the, the great reset there's another power that is interested in all these things now it continues and says this it continues and says this it says the contest will be between the commandments of god and the commandments of men those who have yielded step by step to worldly demands and conform to worldly customs here it says that those who will yield step by step to worldly demands and conform to worldly to worldly customs Th those who will be engaged in this in this conflict those who will stand against the law of god are those who have been yielding step by step to worldly demands and we know babylon is, is, is another name for babylon is is worldliness it is it is it is the world the world is in it the spirit of god is not in it so those who will yield be they thought leaders be they be they kings be they merchants of the earth those who will yield to it and will will drink of its wine in the end, will find themselves doing, doing its bidding. And when it is too late, they'll realize that its bidding is all about worship. He says, those who have yielded step by step to worldly demands and conform to worldly customs will then yield to the powers that be, rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threat, threatened imprisonment, and death. At that time, the gold will be separated from the, from the dross. For you not to be among the dross, for you to be, to be, to be, to be, to be in the company of the gold, 
You need not to yield to the demands of the world step by step. You need to abide in the law of God. And when you abide in the law of God, you will keep the Sabbath of God because it is a sign between him and us. So, we have seen very well that great changes, the people desire changes to take place. And while the people desire changes to take, take place, behind the scenes, there's a system that is interested in this change because it knows that when it uses these changes very well, it will use these economic des changes and economic desires, and it will use this great reset to bring people into a difficult position, and the central issue will be, will be worship. Are great changes taking place? Remember, we are studying about uh, Sabbath, the great test, and we have seen that Sabbath becomes a great test when the world demands for the spurious Sabbath, while the people demand for a spurious Sabbath, while the people think about the false Sabbath and forget the true Sabbath. Now let us go again and look at the changes that are taking place in the, in the world today. Let us look at the changes that are taking place in the world today. Now, before we look at that, we have said that, uh, look at this again. We have talked about a great reset and everyone is crying that the world needs a great reset. The project for a new world. Everyone is crying for the project for a new world. It is an agenda that is that is forming. It is an agenda that is forming. And as we had said, that during a time of crisis, great changes always take, take place. Now here, it says, look at what thought leaders are saying. It says, I am, uh, it says, it says this, once we know, it says, this is from uh, Lo, Lo Se Vato Romano. Look at this article. This is 10th July, 2020. It says, once we know where to go, going there becomes much easier. Once we know where to go, going there becomes much easier. It continues to, 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 to say that, to begin with, to protect everyone, the entire world from the virus with a vaccine that will be declared a global common good, then simply to create a very different world. So there's a desire to create a different world. There's a desire to have a great reset. There's a great reset agenda. And we have seen that in this great reset agenda, there's a power that is interested. The Babylonian system is interested. There are some strings that it is, it is pulling to bring about the, its great reset. And when the merchants of the earth also seek for a great reset, Babylonian system sees an opportunity to use that machinery that will be set to enforce its false Sabbath. Now, it continues to say this, this article. Now, look at what uh, uh, thought leaders are saying. He's saying, I am happy to see that Pope Francis has the same feeling as I do. Going back to the old world will be insane action because the world that were, that, that were coming, we are coming from was a very inhospitable world, a terrifying world, a world which was about to finish itself by global warming, by wealth concentration, mm -hmm. again, money matters, by artificial intelligence removing human beings from job. At that point, everything was converging and we had only a few years left before the whole world collapsed. From the global warming side, there is a very small time left before the world comes uh, unlivable. It is the same for wealth concentration, which is a ticking time bomb, which can explode politically, socially, with anger, and the same for the artificial intelligence, because of which people will have no job or no work for them. Now, it continues says this, that's not the kind of world that we would like to go back to. That's the point. And the coronavirus has done a great favor despite the fact that it made uh, a horrible situation for the planet. But it has done a great favor to us because it stops the machine in rushing towards death. So today, we are at least not rushing anywhere. The train has stopped. We can just look around. We can get off the train, which was taking us to sure end, and now can decide where we want to go and find safety and security. We need a great reset. That is basically the message. We need a great reset. But who will help in, 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 playing, in, in, in achieving this great reset? Now, who will help in achieving this great reset? Now, look at what thought leaders are saying. Look at what thought leaders are saying. Go and read this article. It says, if Pope Francis gives the leadership immediately, 
the message becomes powerful. Which message? The Great Reset. If Pope Francis, which message? The New World. If Pope Francis gives the leadership immediately, the message becomes powerful. People respect his views globally, irrespective of their religious affiliation. We remember the impact of his views made during the Paris negotiations on reaching consensus on the global environmental crisis. His call to the world helped in reaching the Paris Agreement. He says, Pope Francis... Can, can play a very important role now. I request him to play that role firmly. Remember what we read in, in, in the book, Revelation 13, that there will be a combination of church and state, that there will be a combination of the world and the church. And according to the word of God, is that all these things will bring people to a point whereby the Sabbath issue will be a great test. And we are seeing the world taking shape. We are seeing thought leaders taking this ball to the court of the church and saying if the church will lead us to this direction, then we will achieve our agenda. But we know that in the, in the, in the long run, the issue is about worship. The issue is about worship. According to the prophecies, because they have said very well that no man might be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. Is the world changing? Is the world taking, taking, taking shape? Again, we, we go and look. Now, look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Is the Sabbath being brought into conflict with the Spurious Sabbath? This is April 25, 2020. Shops in Croatia to close on Sunday. This is uh, Croatia Newsweek. Now, it says this. It says, Croatia is about to start the first of its three phase lifting of lockdown measures. The first phase starting on Monday 27 April will enable the opening of all retail entities apart from those in shopping centers. The exception being those stores that have been operating in shopping centers the entire time since the introduction of restrictions. Now, it says this, there will be a return to normal working hours for shop on Mondays. Trading, however, has been banned on Sundays. Trading has been banned on Sundays. We are seeing that the world is, 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 is slowly sinking in to the Sunday rest. And as we were saying that the Sabbath will be a great test. Because while the world is sinking into the Sunday rest, we ask ourselves, will they recognize the Sabbath rest? Will they recognize the Sabbath rest? And that's why it is a, it is a, a great test. Slowly and slowly the world is sinking into the spurious, the spurious Sabbath. Now look at, look, at, look, at this, look at this again. Look at this again. Now, this is a uh, statista. Now, what does it say? We have just said about uh, we have just said about uh, Croatia. Now, look at this again. Sunday trading ban in Poland. Statistics and facts. This is April third, twenty twenty. Again, Sunday trading ban. But I want us to look at something here. Now, it says this. It says that. The Sunday trading ban took effect in Poland on March 1st, 2018. It, it, it is being implemented gradually over a three-year period. In 2018, shops were closed on Sundays with two-month exceptions, the first and the last Sunday of each month. In 2019, only one Sunday per month is to be excluded from the ban. That is the last Sunday of each month, as well as selected Sundays before Christmas and one before Easter. From 2020 onward, the law will allow for Sunday shopping on Sundays preceding Christmas, one Sunday before Easter and the last Sunday of January, April, June, and August of each calendar year. On Christmas Eve and Easter, and Easter Saturday preceding Easter, buyers will be able to purchase until 2 p.m. As a general overview, in 2019, there are 37 Sundays with the trading ban. Meanwhile, in 2020, customers won't be able to do their shopping for 45 Sundays of the year. But let us look at this. What is the public perception? Because we are we had read that uh, people, that many, will demand or will see sense in a spurious Sabbath. And when many see sense in a spurious Sabbath, they will not see sense in the Sabbath of, of the Lord. Now look at, look at this. What is the perception of people? Because people are going to be involved. And what is the perception of, of people? Now look at this. Public perception of the trading ban in Poland. Just look at this statistic public perception of the trading ban in poland assessment of the sunday ban implementation in poland perception of sunday trading restrictions how do people feel about these trading restrictions what what do they think about these trading restrictions because we know that behind it is a spiritual is a spiritual is a spiritual 
there's a spiritual connotation be, behind it. Now, perception of Sunday trading restrictions in, in Poland in, 20, in 2018, there's a graph that I'm looking for. There's a graph that I was looking for here about, uh, now, is, is closing stores on some Sunday a hindrance for, for you? That is a question that has been asked. Is closing shop on Sunday a hindrance for you? I just need to read. Mm, the graph is behind is behind this mm, just a minute let us remove this advert here mm -hmm. let's go back and try and, and see the, the, the graph of what people think mm, public perception uh, public perception of trading restrictions in Sunday mm, customer behavior Sunday trading mm -hmm. just try and look at this if it will give the graph I hope that oh Exclusive premium setting. You you go you you go and you go and find. I think this this thing has as bad the 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 it has bad us from seeing the the graph. But when you see the graph, you'll see that people a greater percentage of people don't see any problem with 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 the bans, and that's why we are dread that you'll come a time whereby it is the people who will demand for arrest, which is contrary to the word of God, and that's why the Sabbath is a great test. Let us go back to. To these spiritual prophecy readings and draw a point then we shall call it a close he said the time is not far distance when the test will come to every soul the observance of the false sabbath will be urged upon us the contents will be between the commandments of god and the commandments of men those who have yielded step by step to worldly demands and conform to worldly customs will then yield to the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision insult and imprisonment and death and that time the gold will be separated from the from the from the dross he says this, Testimonies, uh, Volume 5, page 586. The Christian world is now making movements. As the world is making, as the civil, as the, as the, as the civil, civil, wo civil world is making movement, the Christian world is also making movements. He says the Christian world is now making movements, which will necessarily bring commandment, commandment keeping people into prominence. There is a constant supplanting of God's truth by the theories and false doctrines of human origin. Movements are being set on foot to enslave the conscience of those who will be loyal to God. The law-making powers will be against God's people. Now, highlight this. The law-making powers will be against God's people. Every soul will be tested. It has said every soul will be tested. And who will be involved? The law-making powers. And what will bring the law-making powers to a point whereby they'll stand against the commandments of God? It is the wine of Babylon. Now, lastly, let us look at this. And we know that while the world is getting into this mood, the Sabbath will continue to be dishonored. Now, look at, look at this. Uh, look, at, look at this uh, graph. This is in, in Nigeria. Now, look at, look at this. Let us, ex let us expand it. Uh, look at look look at this, and uh, you understand that the Sabbath will be will be will be people will be brought into into a test over the Sabbath over the Sabbath issue. Now this is uh, the return to church policy, and look at here, look at the first point here. He says that in the all churches and worshippers must adhere to the following: attend church only on Sundays. That is number one. Attend church church only. On Sundays it says here attend church only on Sundays attend church only on Sundays we have seen very well that there comes a time whereby the Sabbath the Sabbath keeping people will be brought into prominence why will they be brought into prominence they'll be brought into prominence by being asked why are they living contrary to the, the direction that the world has taken where will you stand let us pray Heavenly Father, we come before this wonderful evening. We thank you for being with us. We know very well, Heavenly Father, that final events are very rapid, Heavenly God. As the world is seeking for a great reset, Heavenly Father, we know that those who will drink of the wine of Babylon, Heavenly Father, will go ahead, Heavenly Father, and be drunk by the effect thereof, Heavenly God. 
and we know it will bring your people into prominence even further. And the prominence that they'll be brought into even further is why are they living contrary to the desires of the world while the whole world has decided to move in a specific direction even God. We ask of you that may we not yield to the world step by step so that that day that uh, we shall be brought into conflict with the beast and his image, we be ready to stand and do your bidding. All this we ask, Heavenly Father, and we pray, Father God, for each and every soul, the poor and the rich, the small and the great, that they be aware of the wine of Babylon, that they drink from the well, they drink from you the water of life, so that they be able to have everlasting life, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that may you bring us, Father God, into prominence, Heavenly Father, the prominence of standing by your word, Heavenly God. Be with us now and forevermore. The Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you all and have a blessed uh, evening.